Eric. No. Happy New Year! <laughs> it is officially 2021 right now. And let's leave behind everything that happened in 2020. Um, there's a lot Except of Except for the elections. <laughs> We're still going to have to deal with that anyways, unfortunately. Um, but it is officially 2021. Rick, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. How was your new year, by the way? I watched Wonder Woman. Oh, nice. And then I watched oh, the new movie. The new movie. Nice. And then I watched Ford versus Ferrari. First time. First time. Oh wow, that was actually I, I, that was a really good movie. I my mom it. thought it was really boring. Oh my god, that's such a good movie. Yeah, so my <laughs> mom and I watched movies on our couch and then <laughs> went to bed before midnight. <laughs> oh, before midnight. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. I was I I watched Avengers, um, Age of Old no um, Endgame, Avengers Endgame had it timed up to midnight. Yep, that's that's my that's my New Year's tradition is to time things up to midnight. First time I ever did this was um, Death Star at midnight actually. <laughs> last year I forget what I did last year but this year I did uh, Avengers Endgame timed up the snap at midnight it's amazing not gonna lie it, it so basketball so basketball anyways let's get to what we actually talk about here before we get into what the title we talk about basketball know, right before we get into the title that we are naming this video, let us do our hellos and goodbyes of the top 25 that we normally do. Mm. Hello in the top 25, tied at number 19, Clemson, as well as the first time that they're in the top 25, St. Louis, tied at number 23. They are yep. officially in the top 25. I am pleasantly surprised. I'm happy that we have another mid-major in the top 25 along with number one, Gonzaga. And then goodbyes to number 19, Northwestern, and number 25, Ohio State. Getting votes still, however, BYU, Drake, who did get votes last week. We didn't cover that. I still want to give him a little bit of a shout-out from last week, saying, like, hi, welcome to the voting stuff. Um, still undefeated, by the way, I think. Yep. Um, and They're see, dominating the northern part of the Midwest. I know. I, I, love, I love seeing those maps. Those so you know what's maps. hilarious <laughs> is... Um, on Twitter, people were like, why is Wazoo taking up so much of this map? Oh, yeah. And then and they, they lost. lost. <laughs> <laughs> and then Gonzaga was like, yeah, we'll take Oregon, we'll take Idaho. <laughs> yeah. um, and then also getting votes, uh, San Diego State, as well as another team that was receiving votes last week. But again, welcome to the uh, votes receiving for this week, Boise State. And then Chattanooga uh, was receiving votes last week. I think one or two 25 votes. Um, but this week they are not receiving votes. But I still at least want to give you guys a shout out because we didn't release a video last week. Anything you want to talk about with the top 25 before we get into what I just absolutely want to talk about? Uh, top 25 always frustrates me because I feel like it's always super centric on specific conferences. Like, isn't, like, there's, like, what, eight Big 12 teams or Big oh, 10 teams? It, it's Big 12 and Big 10 are the best conferences this year. <laughs> right, according to the top 25 rankings. But yeah. I feel like um, the teams that would finish seventh in the Big 10 would probably not finish first or second in a lot of other conferences, yet are mm. still ranked ahead of... Mm. Um, teams that are from the Missouri Valley or other conferences mm -hmm. like that. Like, where's the love for NIU, Huskies, right. or any, anybody else? All right. So, first of all, speaking of the conferences and kind of what we were alluding to. So, Andy Katz, uh, this last week, put out his own little poll of who he thinks the top conferences are. Not too much of a surprise as to what the tops are. Big 10, Big 12 and as number one, number two. Big East, I'm a little surprised. It's a basketball first conference. It is. Made it, up is of blue it, is it is. It is. But, but having them above ACC was a little bit of a surprise to me. So that's why I was a little it's bit surprised. It's because Duke and North Carolina. Carolina. So that's the thing is that it's more showing of 
what AC, but it's not, this isn't the best of Big East Conference, though. Like, this year isn't the best Big East. Right, but Big East, like, even their bottom feeders, like Wake mm -hmm. Forest, etc., mm -hmm. are still going. Wake Forest is ACC. <laughs> Rip. <laughs> uh, no, but it's like, but, but like, yeah. but, but again, the Big East, it's a basketball. It when, is. when the conference is split, Big East was basketball and ACC was right. football. And because of that, I think Big East is always going to have the edge there. Um, the only thing that's stopping Big East from just, or the only thing keeping the ACC up there is the fact that um, Duke and North Carolina, mm -hmm. um, and I guess. Clemson for some Louis Louisville's up there too. Louisville, especially yeah. for basketball, but but yeah, again, like not so much of like it, it's not a whole big surprise in terms of Andy Katz's top five. Number one, I get like I said, Big Ten. Number two, Big Twelve. Uh, number three, Big East. Number four, ACC. Number five, SEC. Not a big surprise as to who the top five are. Those are all power well, six. Well, with Team Kentucky conferences. being like one in thirty this year, or whatever that is, they are. <laughs> right. Um, it is. It's slightly surprising that the SEC is still held up there, but you do have, um, you have your um, what are they? The Missouri and Tennessee Missouri this year, yeah. And um, I guess Texas A and M maybe. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, a and M in Tech. Uh, no, Texas Tech is Big Twelve. No, yeah, yeah. But you have those those schools. Mm -hmm. Um, that usually aren't top 10 teams, but are definitely top 50. Right, yeah. So, again, not a whole big surprise as to who the top five are. Again, I would kind of question Big East, ACC kind of a thing, just knowing for years. But his number six conference, mm -hmm. WCC, West Coast Conference, he has them ranked over the Pac-12. Yeah. Yeah. And then his 8, 9, 10 are a little bit of a surprise to me as well. A10, the Athletic 10 at number 8, Mountain West number 9, and Missouri Valley Conference number 10. And I'm assuming he has the American Athletic Conference as number 11, the AAC. Probably. I'm honestly surprised, one, that he has WCC I'm not. over A10. Nah. Athletic 10, as well as having AAC that low. So, and, it, and, and keep in mind, Missouri Valley Conference does not have UConn this year. This <laughs> they were in the Big East. Who cares? Yeah. What I want to get into anyways is the fact that WCC is ranked higher, according to him, for the Pac-12. Yeah. That's so, because um, you have, well, okay. Yeah, that makes sense to me because uh, the uh, you have Gonzaga, number one team in the country, mm -hmm. um, almost unanimous. There's like mm -hmm. three coaches and one mm -hmm. AP poll person who don't believe that. Um, and second up, you have BYU, which is a budding power. Or a returning power, I should mm -hmm. say. Um, and they're they're strong, and they should be able to beat pretty much anybody in the Pac-12 on a good day, and most of the Pac-12 on an average day. Mm -hmm. I would say Oregon is probably the only team, maybe Colorado, um, in the Pac-12 that I would take over BYU. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, or maybe Utah as well. And <laughs> BYU fans, uh, <laughs> you didn't hear that. Um, but then, um, actually that would be a series that needs to happen every year. <laughs> All right. Um, so after that, um, you have St. Mary's, which routinely just, uh, poops on the entire, uh, California gamut of Pac-12 schools every year. <laughs> um, and then you're looking at other things. Like if you look at the bottom of the WCC, you have San Diego and Portland. Mm -hmm. We didn't talk too much about Portland's one point victory over Oregon State, mm -hmm. which just won a game um, this past weekend over another Pac-12 school. Who did they beat? Um, Oregon State, who did you beat? But my point is, mm -hmm. 
Portland. This team that was struggling against D2 teams <laughs> beat Oregon State. Right. Who then went on to beat, like, Pac-12 teams. So you're, what I'm saying is the bottom two teams in the WCC wouldn't finish at the bottom of the Pac-12. Mm-hmm. So you have better teams across the board. Mm-hmm. Now, what we're probably going to talk about later, um, and so I'm just going to allude to this, I'm going to come back to this when we talk about the Pepperdine versus UCLA series. Mm-hmm. Um, and we do have to put the caveat in there that it is a Lorenzo Romar game. Who uh, <laughs> is Pepperdine doing this season, though? <laughs> so here, here's the thing about Lorenzo Romar. I guarantee you his halftime speech it goes something along the lines of, there are X number of national cameras, there are X number of scouts, and... Um, your your stat line in the stat book is this. That's his halftime speech. It's not, let's play team ball. It's not, this is the team's weaknesses. It is telling his guys how to get, like, go pro. That's what he's really good at, is getting talent to showcase itself. He's not good at winning games. So, let's just get right into it. The question that this video is, is, is Pac-12 now a mid-major conference, slash, should we be talking about Pac-12 teams more and more, <laughs> actually? So that's, this, that's the point of this channel, is to talk about mid-major teams. Should we be talking about Pac-12 teams in a brighter fashion? So, currently, according to Joe Lenardi's... Um, Bracketology. Currently, Pac-12 has five bids into the March Madness Tournament, and this is all out of conference play. Mm -hmm. Now we're officially into conference. Five bids. WCC only has one, Gonzaga, obviously. BYU is right there. I think they're the final four out. Mm -hmm. Mountain West has two with San Diego State and Boise State. Uh, the AAC has two. I'm blanking on the two that they have, and the A10 actually has three. Okay. Pac-12's current record against other power conferences. So power conferences being the P6, so we're including the Big East. Okay. It's usually traditionally the Big uh, Power Five, and then basketball's uh, the P6, so Big East. Four and eight against. Power conferences. Mm -hmm. A losing record. Yep. Current record of them against the WCC, 8-3. Against the Mountain West, they are 0-3. They are uh, 1-0 against the A-10, and they played zero games against the AAC. They are also currently 0-6 versus ranked opponents. Now, I want to give them a little bit of fairness. Only two of those games uh, was a ranked team from them against another ranked team. So they were 0-4 when they were unranked. Flip it over. When they were ranked versus an unranked team, Mm -hmm. they are 6-2. Now, you're a power conference. You might schedule a bottom feeder team. Yep. In those six wins. Especially a local one, so you don't have to travel very far. So, Arizona State, when they were ranked 23, played Grand Canyon. Which is basically a... It's a for-profit university. (laughs) Well, yeah, I don't want to get into that. I don't (laughs) care. The fact is that they played another basketball team. They did win. This is one of the six wins against Grand Canyon. 71-70 to Mm -hmm. against Grand Canyon. Mm-hmm. Now, what was what was Grand? What is Grand Canyon's Kempom rank? So, according to the advanced <laughs> stat analytics, how how close should that game have been? A hundred and forty three on Ken Palm is Grand Canyon. Okay, so you would expect a one point game, probably at home, <laughs> because you know it's a it's a it's a non- <laughs> Yeah, you would expect that a 143 opponent to mean you're going to be what, like high 110s? <laughs> it's 
It, and that's not even like another close win of these six wins from the Pac-12 is that there was UCLA, who was ranked 23 at the time, played Pepperdine. They did beat Pepperdine in double overtime, 107 to 98. Yep. Those are two of their six wins right there versus unranked opponents. Mind you, Colby Ross, who is a candidate for the WCC Player of the Year. Yes. Um, and should probably win WCC Player of the Week every time Gonzaga doesn't have a game. Mm -hmm. um, played, well, if that was double overtime, that means he played 50 minutes. Yes. No, and I think at that point... When they were playing, he was averaging over 40 minutes a game. It, it, for the first, like, eight <laughs> games of the season, he was averaging over 40 minutes per game. Um, so, he, Pepper, so UCLA didn't beat Pepperdine. Pepperdine ran out of gas. Yes, that's it. And I think they did foul out. Like, yeah. I think there was, like, two or three guys from Pepperdine that fouled out. Probably before that overtime game. Yeah. Or the second overtime that happened in that game. And it was like that again, those are two of their six wins. And, now, and and hang on. How close should that game have been? What is Pepperdine ranked? <laughs> they aren't ranked. Oh, well, what where does Ken Palm put them? Where, where do they have them? Ken Palm has them at 145. So under Grand Canyon? Two spots below <laughs> Grand Canyon. <laughs> and they were based, and UCLA was ranked at basically the same spot as ASU, as yeah. Arizona State. Um, the one win I would highlight out of all of this uh, for the Pac 12 is Oregon, number 21 at the time, playing uh, Seton Hall. They did beat Seton Hall, who I think should be a tournament bid. Oh, easily. They're um, a top 50 team. Yeah, Seton Hall, they beat them by 13 points, 83 to 70. However, the two losses, Oregon, again, at the time was number 21, lost to Missouri, 83-75. To be fair. To be fair, Missouri is currently 7-1. and one. Yes. And is ranked, what did I say, 14th? 13th. 13th, yeah. 14th, somewhere in there. And Ken Palm has them, again, they as are, a top 50 team. They, they are high up there. So to be fair with that loss, again, <laughs> yeah, like you were a ranked team going against an unranked team. And then the second loss, which, again, is against a team that's been balancing back and forth between the rankings, Number 22, UCLA, lost to SDSU San Diego State, 73-58. to 58. Okay. So not only did they lose to San Diego State, they lost oh, yeah. to San Diego State. San Diego State's <laughs> game plan was effective. That, that game was lost. So that's, what hap that, that's what's happening this year. Mm -hmm. Now let's go back in history. Again, this, I don't want to take things into a vacuum. I don't want to say because of this year they should be a mid-major conference. One second. I was <laughs> mentioning um, I was mentioning the UCLA Pepperdine game back yes. when I was talking about uh, WCC finishing better. Now, UCLA is was ranked and is considered to be one of the top teams in the Pac-12. Yes. Pepperdine was is in a fight to finish between fourth. And not last. Seventh. <laughs> well, fourth and not last <laughs> in, the pack, in the WCC. Essentially. <laughs> like, that's, that means that UCLA would again be in the middle, in the middle of the WCC, yeah. yet, yet it is considered to be a top, top third team for the Pac-12. Mm -hmm. So, Pac-12, power conference team. Football first. Big research institutions only power conference team west of the rockies mm -hmm. um and so all of those things stand out and for that and that alone the pac-12 remains a power conference team yeah. but when the uh when the football playoff committee thinks your conference is a joke when the NCAA tournament committee thinks your conference is a joke. I wouldn't even say that, and I'm going to get to that in a minute. And then the only thing that is saving the Pac-12, baseball. 
Uh, oh, and volleyball. volleyball and, and soccer. Women's soccer. Women's. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Women's soccer. Let's be real about that. But let's let's go back in time a little bit. So last year, what did Pac-12 do? So Andy Katz had seven bids for the Pac-12 last year in the NCAA tournament. Obviously, we didn't have the tournament last year. And that was kind of the range. Like, people had either five at the fewest, seven at the most for... Um, the Pac-12, and one of those bids being a play-in, mm -hmm. usually. Um, UCLA was the play-in for Andy Katz last year. Uh, WCC, three teams last year. Mountain West 2, A-10-2, and AAC 2. Last year, again, a losing record against power conferences, 15-19. to WCC, 12-9. to mm -hmm. Mountain West completely destroyed them, 15-2. Mm -hmm. AE 10-1-0, and then a losing record to the AAC, 2-3. and three. Which is kind of a basketball conference. It is. I would look at the AAC as the WCC of the East Coast. No, no, it totally is. I'm just saying that these aren't power conferences. No, Pac-12 is. And that's why I'm saying that's it has, it <laughs> has It has power conference yeah. money. Yes. It also has California taxes, but it has it has power conference money. Yes. Well, that's what I'm saying is that should we be considering this conference a power conference? Against ranked opponents, 6-12, and 12, um, Utah, Colorado, UW last year did win against a ranked team when they were unranked. And then everything else was like, okay, yeah, you weren't ranked, so obviously you should lose to a ranked team. You were a ranked team, so obviously you should beat a um, ranked. Or it was like those close ranking matchups. Mm -hmm. So now, taking to the perspective of when they were ranked versus unranked, absolutely destroyed it. Last year, they were a really good conference mm -hmm. in terms of, uh, of everything going on. I definitely think that they should have had five, six, maybe seven. I wouldn't push it that far. Um, but against unranked opponents when they were ranked, 33 and four. Games that I want to highlight, um, the UW win over Mount St. Mary's last year. UW was ranked 20. They barely, I would say, beat Mount St. Mary's 56 to 46. Did they call the game at halftime? I guess. Like, that's that honestly feels like a halftime <laughs> score, if not like five, ten minutes into the second half. Yeah. Um, in that same week, they lost to Tennessee, who was unranked, 75 to 62. Now, Tennessee is usually mm -hmm. a top half team. No, they usually are, and I will agree. Like, in fairness, this is against another power conference team. Yes, I yeah. will take that into fairness. Um, but Arizona, number 14 at the time, did beat Pepperdine 93-91 last year. Okay, remember back to my Lorenzo Bomar <laughs> coaching comments. There's a number in front of Arizona's name. That means you get good pepper dye. <laughs> if there's a number involved in the game, Pepperdine is a good team. If there's no number involved in the game, Pepperdine is bad. And then... Um, Another one of their four losses, number 24, Colorado, who was a really good Colorado team last year, uh, lost to UNI, Northern Iowa, 79 to 76. And then we'll talk about UW again. UW was number 21. They lost to Houston, 75 71 last year. But Houston was stupid good last year, right? No, they were, because they got, they got up in the rankings too. So again, last year. Pac-12 was competitive. Was I will use the word competitive. Yes. yes, that's probably the best. That's probably the best way to describe them last year. The year before that, 2018, 2019, there was only three bids that they got into the uh, March Madness tournament. WCC got two. Mountain West got two. AAC got four. Wasn't A10 got two. I th and if I remember correctly, it's because one of those bids made it because they won the tournament, but. Otherwise, we're completely unqualified. They probably. I'm not entirely... I can't remember who got the tournament. Wasn't it... I think it was... There was a weird year where Washington was like 10-10 and 10 in the Pac-12. 
and then like, won the tournament and got it. And I don't think this was the year because I don't think U Dub hasn't gotten the tournament a little bit. But anyways, um, this year again, I will say justifiably three bits. 18, 19. <laughs> 18, 19. 8 and 26 against power conferences. Hey man, somebody's got to win and somebody's got to lose the power <laughs> conference game. Um, they're only, I guess, against conference win that we've been mentioning uh, with these conferences 10 and 3 against Mountain West. So they step up against Mountain West. But they probably are. The West like, sucks. They're, they're probably facing San Jose State. San Jose honest. State, Fresno <laughs> State. <laughs> those are the teams that they're probably facing. Utah State. State for like eight or nine of those wins. <laughs> um, the only so that's the only winning record that they have against WCC eight and ten against A ten zero and one and against AAC one and four. They're. <laughs> their record against ranked opponents, and again, I will take that into perspective. Five and seventeen against ranked opponents. So yes, maybe you'll have like those bottom feeders, like UW playing Gonzaga and some other ranked teams multiple times throughout the year. Oh, that was some shade. Um, <laughs> but UW did get one non-ranked win during that time. Uh, ASU got a non-ranked win during that time, and Oregon got a non-ranked win. But Oregon was good that year. And Oregon year after year is good. Oregon's always good. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm not gonna. Dana Altman can coach. I, I'm not gonna really trash Oregon in any sense. I'm just you gonna trash your conference. You want to know a fun fact about Oregon? What this year they are starting five players who started at different schools. Oh really? I didn't yeah, know that. That's awesome. Every <laughs> single starter for Oregon has started at a different school. <laughs> Four transfers and a JC. Nice. Um, oh wait, hang on. Does that mean that Oregon? The best basketball team in the Pac-12 can't recruit? <laughs> they can recruit. It's just not for freshmen. <laughs> oh, right, right, right. Yep, yep, yep. Um, but then, again, take this into perspective. They're, when they were ranked versus unranked, there's not that many games. <laughs> Nine and five when they were ranked versus unranked. Now, the year that we just talked about last year, 33 to 4. So there's a big change between those two years. The 9 and 5 ranked versus unranked in the 2018 to 2019. Um, I just want to highlight most of the losses. Uh, Oregon ranked 18 at both times. They lost to Texas Southern, 89-84. Texas Southern is usually a dark horse each and every year, I feel like. Texas, if I remember correctly, Texas Southern won their conference that year. Yeah. Um, and they played Gonzaga tough, too. Yeah. Um, and then they also did lose to Houston, 65-61. Which is 61. a top half AAC mm -hmm. team. Um, ASU ranked 18 at the time, lost to Vanderbilt, 81-65. And they also lost to Princeton when they were ranked 17, ace, or 67 to 66. Yep. I just want to highlight those uh, four losses. The fifth loss was probably like a close one against like Creighton or something like that. It was like, I, I think it was like against another power conference team. The year before that, 2017, 2018. Again, only three bids. WCC only got one. Mountain West got two. A10 got three. AAC got three. Against power conference teams. The closest they've probably been to an even record, 12 and 13 versus power conference teams. Overall, they were 7 and 2 versus SEC. Because the <laughs> SEC sucks. <laughs> um, uh, against other. What, are, what I'm hearing from all of this is a lot of East Coast bias. <laughs> These numbers heavily favor the East Coast, which is not yes. fair. Yes. Because there are two halves of this country, and the West yes. Coast deserves some numbers, too. Yes. yes. So why are we yes. not giving more wins to the West Coast? Yes. Uh, especially, against, uh, especially for these bids. But uh, Pac-12 versus the WCC, 8-4. Versus the Mountain West that year, 10-4. Against the A-10, 2-1. And, and against the AAC, 1-5. And, and I think AAC pretty much has their number um, between all these stats that we've... Uh, said out loud uh their record versus ranked opponents six and nine 
<laughs> um, there was quite a bit of non-ranked or non-ranked wins that they have over those ranked opponents: ASU, WSU, Arizona, UW, and UCLA. Five of those six wins were um, non-ranked wins over uh, ranked opponents. Uh, Twenty and five when they were ranked versus unranked, and I want to highlight certain games because again, I want to kind of put these certain games in perspective. 23 UCLA played uh, Central Arkansas. They won 106 to 101 in overtime against Central Arkansas. Number 10 USC played Vanderbilt at the time. They did win 93 to 89 in overtime as well. Number 23 UCLA played Creighton. They did lose to Creighton 100 to 89. And number two Arizona played SMU, Southern Methodist University, lost to them 66 to 60. And number 14 USC also lost to Southern Methodist University 72 to 55. Hold up, Arizona was ranked number two from what I saw in 2017. In 2018. But you, you can't rank them number two because they're not a Final Four team. They've never won a Final Four game. <laughs> They've actually won a championship. <laughs> Under Sean Miller. <laughs> 1998, I think, is when they won their championship. Correct. Which I think is the last time a Pac-12 team won the championship. No, USC won in 2004. Uh, right. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they did win the 2000s. But that was football. <laughs> <laughs> Not basketball. But overall, looking at these stats, is Pac-12 a mid-major team? Or mid-major conference? Athletically? Basketball? Athletically? <laughs> this this athletic be, They so, have to be a mid-major conference. Uh, with the exception of last year, mm -hmm. in the last four or five years, they haven't done much for college basketball. So let's. And when was the last time any of them actually did something in March Madness? 2017, Oregon got to the Final Four. Mm -hmm. Before then, what? So, so this is where we peel back the lid a little bit and look at what's underneath this picture we just portrayed. Because this picture is pretty damning. <laughs> and so if we peel back that lid, what we see is Sean Miller at Arizona with top five recruiting classes unable to make a top four, or a final four. And the FBI under his gun. And the FBI for recruiting <laughs> violations. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> he can't even cheat his way into a final four. Okay. So we have that. We have Dana Altman, who shows up at Oregon and immediately makes them a top 25 team. Who yes, I'm not going to say anything about Oregon. I'm not going to say anything okay. about him. Colorado, which was added to the conference in the 2010s and magically became a top three school in the conference. Utah, a Mountain yes, West team. Gonzaga can be magically added to the Pac-12 and win the conference. I don't care. <laughs> Utah, a Mountain West team, comes in and becomes a top five team. So we are in... Where is Utah right now? In the Pac-12. Yeah, in the Pac-12. Where in the Pac-12? Usually in the middle. Middle, middle kind of bottom right now? <laughs> I mean, that's because Jakob Podol graduated. <laughs> but, but my point here is, you have these outside teams that are coming in and automatically winning in the Pac-12. So you already know the Pac-12 is kind of weak. <laughs> yes, that's the key point right there. They're weak. Hang on, hang on. I'm, I'm peeling back this lid ever, ever so slightly more. For comparison's sake, you add BYU to the WCC. Granted, Jimmer Fredette just graduated. But everybody's like, oh, they're going to come in and raffle stomp. No! They, like, it took them, like, three years to make the finals at, in Vegas. Mm -hmm. So, no, like, there's an acclimate, there's supposed to be an acclimation period. You are not supposed to come in and raffle stomp right away. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Colorado does. Meanwhile, Utah does. So, Pac-12, we already know, is, is weak. And then if we peel that back, we look at the coaching staff. There are no Coach K's. There are no Bob Huggins. Mm -hmm. There are no other name brand coaches. Brad Stevens, 
all these other coaches are not in the Pac-12. You don't have the coaching pedigree. Then take a look at the Pac-12 network. Pac-12 network, pa Pac network is one of the most garbage TV deals <laughs> on the face of the planet. Honestly, BYU probably has them beat. <laughs> Honestly, BYU TV is probably better. Like, I, I bet you I am more, if I go to a hotel, I'm more likely to find UPN. <laughs> That I am the Pac-12 network. And so, as you're peeling this back, you find the Pac-12 is bleeding, bleeding money. Yes. UC Berkeley basically had to declare bankruptcy. <laughs> and, like, also, they are bleeding money in their football programs. They keep firing coaches left and right. Like, if you want a retirement plan, come to a Pac-12 school and lose. Um... And so you keep doing this, and what you realize is the Pac-12 is significantly underperforming of what they should be because of a lack of money, a lack of coaching, and just a lack of quality. Like, Lorenzo Romar at Washington was one of the best coaches and teams in the Pac-12, and you put him at Pepperdine, which is an easier conference, and he's performing even worse! <laughs> like... <laughs> my god Utah makes this grand amazing game changing hire by going to Syracuse and then what's the one coach that actually has done something out of the Pac-12 Tony Bennett from U uh, from Wazoo to Virginia yes <laughs> honestly like if you want if the Pac-12 want to be taken seriously you don't let Tony Bennett go to go to Virginia if you if he wants to leave the Palouse <laughs> wants you right now. <laughs> no, no, no. He doesn't stay in the Palouse. Mike Leach didn't even stay in the Palouse. That was the perfect, perfect spot for Mike Leach. Nobody cared that he was insane and like doing whatever because like Mike Leach is kind of like the Mark Few of, uh, no, he's He's Mark Few's hillbilly cousin of football. <laughs> because, like... Fair. Yeah, especially down there. <laughs> yeah, but then he went to uh, Mississippi State and yeah. didn't... It, 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 I digress. Okay, you know how you, how you make the Pac-12 credible? Rather than letting Tony Bennett go to Virginia, UCLA, USC, Arizona, or one of these other blue bloods in the Pac-12 goes, Tony Bennett, here's a check. There is no money value written in it. Come work for us. <laughs> Come back, please. That, that's no. how you do it. You don't let Tony Bennett leave. He left in, like, 2011. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty recently, surprisingly. Like, that, you're bleeding. You are bleeding talent and money. And that, so you are a power conference because your big-ass research schools who have football programs and have historically been a power conference. So, Pac-12 without their research programs, period. Are they a mid-major conference? Because <laughs> <laughs> what have they done in football as well, other than maybe Oregon, maybe Washington? So, Oregon, <laughs> Oregon, drop your research programs and come to the WCC. Okay. Um, but, so, if... If the Pac-12 was not forced into the power conference due to literal definitions. Money. <laughs> no, literal yeah. definitions. <laughs> like, if you were to, on paper, yeah. what is a power conference school? It is the Pac-12. If you ignore that, that little detail, yes. what you have <laughs> is yet another mid-major team. So... Honestly, Pac-12, I hope the voting committee, when they make the March Madness brackets this year, send a message, period, to you guys. I hope they give... Three. I hope three. I, I, I hope, first of all, WCC gets three. Mm -hmm. I hope Mountain West gets at least two, mm -hmm. if not three. I hope AAC gets two, if not three. I hope A10 gets three. I hope Pac-12 somehow gets less than that. I hope Pac-12 <laughs> gets three as well. I I, I hope that, here, but it's like, I, I also think Oregon, Colorado. It, no, I get it. 
I just don't want a year of Pac-12 where they're just giving a at least a play-in matchup to like Stanford or USC who yeah. has a history or UCLA who has the most titles blah 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 blah. I don't want that from Pac-12 anymore. I'm tired of Pac-12 getting bids into the NCAA tournament because I want that to I be have transferred a, over to a WCC team that should be like San Francisco, who honestly I think deserves a tournament bid just because over these Pac-12 teams. So I think USF, BYU, and, and Gonzaga deserve bids this year. Yes. Um, Maybe not so much St. Mary's, just because this year, I, period, on it, just because St. Mary's should probably get so, one. So here's what I think should happen. <laughs> yes. Is I think Gonzaga should have a COVID outbreak <laughs> a week before the WCC <laughs> tournament. <laughs> I'd be like, oh no, we can't play in the tournament. I guess somebody else gets the automatic bid. <laughs> so dumb. So I just, but, but true. Also... Because, A, that guarantees two teams. Yes. Um, That's the only way to... Oh, God. We can make another video on this. Let's make another video on this where we're just, like... Why the, ways, ways in which other conferences can just, Ways like, in which Gonzaga screwed the WCC by winning the tournament all the time? Yes. But... Okay. <laughs> but here's, here's, here's the reason why the Pac-12 needs three teams. Mm. One, because I think at least two teams probably deserve it. Yes. Oregon, for sure. Yes. Oregon, I think, has a tournament resume. I... I haven't looked at Colorado's record. Colorado um, and ASU, I'd say, are the only other two. Um, actually, I don't think ASU deserves it. Mm, um, yeah, I mean, it's I'm curious really what the third place team in the Pac-12 is going to wind up being. Um, but uh, I think Colorado's probably better than Rutgers. Um, <laughs> which is funny because they lost another game this week <laughs> uh, to Iowa. It was like a <laughs> So anyway, so we need to get three teams, and honestly, I would be okay with UCLA getting a permanent bid to the NCAA tournament on one condition. I'm afraid of what that one condition is, because I'm not happy with it. Bill Walton <laughs> must, no. must commentate the game. Oh, no. Please. Yes. You know it would be TV gold. No, it won't. On UPN. <laughs> so anyways that's where we're gonna leave it at i'm just gonna throw this out to zag nation because they're gonna have my back on this is pac-12 a power conference in terms of college basketball the conference of champions are they even the conference of champions so i was on my bike going around the <laughs> island of hawaii <laughs> we're gonna end it there i hope you're all healthy i hope you're all staying safe i hope the best for every single one of you in 2021 and is Pac-12 a power conference? Technically, yes. <laughs>